but defense is going to adapt to that, and you don't see a lot of mobile quarterbacks last more than five, six years doing that for a prolonged period of time. Oh, yeah, no doubt about that. I've been preaching that for a long time. You know, guys like him last five, six, seven years, unless they get smart, they stay in the pocket, and they limit themselves to doing that, then I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I hope I'm wrong in this case, but uh, history doesn't bode well when it comes to it doesn't bode well to mobile quarterbacks, and we can get into all the shows all we want about that, but I definitely believe uh, that uh, you're 100% on target with that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the Wildcat offense is a bad thing per se, although I think like a guy like Michael Vick, who had obviously like a prolonged run of success, other than going to prison, the biggest thing that was against him was his height. It's the same thing that may be the downfall of Baker Mayfield, although I think Mayfield has a better passing ability than Vic did during his career. But the big thing there is that they're just not that tall. And, you know, Lamar Jackson, the was like 6'4", 6'5". He's really lanky, so he, it's easy for him to move around. But one bad hit, and that guy oh, can yeah, get hurt yeah. because he doesn't have a lot of muscle mass on him. Whereas Cam Newton, when he was at his peak, he can do pretty much both things, you know, throw and run. But he was also six foot four, and he weighed like 240. He was like a linebacker. So I think that's what made him a lot more, you know, deafening on defenses you know in 2015-2016 the, the, you said the key words durable over the test of time mm -hmm. pretty much I mean I, I, whereas Wilson and, and the funny thing that we mentioned Michael Vick but Russell Wilson's an anomaly because they're both pretty similar in size but I just think Russell Wilson is such an advanced feel for the passing game whereas a lot of these quarterbacks I think Lamar Jackson's become a decent pocket passer but do I, would I put him in that upper echelon of passers in the game? No. I think Stafford's a far better passer than he is, but Lamar Jackson uses his legs in a way that Stafford doesn't have the ability to. So, I mean, t I like you and I just, you know, stated time will tell. And, you, I mean, I hope he does well. He's a local kid. He's from down here in uh, Pompano Beach. And, you know, if he wins the MVP, I'd be pretty nice to see. But I think the biggest thing for them will just be their defense. They've allowed the 14th most uh, – 14th most yards in the NFL this year, and if they're going to go to the go far in the playoffs, they're going to have to make sure that defense is in sync and just as much as Lamar is with also switching off his looks at the run game with um, Mark Ingram at the backfield. So, well, that's true. That's true. You know, I mean, it's, it's the NFL. You have 17 weeks. You get a bye. It's tough. The, get, the players are getting bigger and bigger, and the hits are getting harder and harder. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's one team that scares me as far as the Patriots run to the Super Bowl is concerned, for them to go to a 10th one in the Belichick era, I think it would be Baltimore just because of what we saw two weeks ago. I thought that was the best game of the year thus far, even though you know New England was playing a lot of no puddle, and realistically they would have been smart to kind of chew the clock a little bit more given the fact that Lamar could do that on his own because of the fact that, you know, he resorts to running more than he does to throwing. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they're a big threat. I was glad to see Mahomes come back and play well. If we're talking fantasy, he was my quarterback, and he did get me 29 points, and I wound up winning in my, my league that week. So, hey, I mean, he did what he had to do for me. I mean, just Ryan Tannehill came out of nowhere, and Tannehill's actually played pretty well as a starter. So, yeah, I mean, I feel bad for you with Rod with Aaron Rodgers. You know, I thought he would have had a much better game. I don't even think he threw a passing touchdown last week, and but the run game looked okay, and they still won. But all right, well, we w we want to welcome our next guest to the Sports Exchange, and uh, Chris Harry, welcome to the Sports Exchange, buddy, my old colleague from back up in Tampa. Glad to have you, Chris. Hello, Scott. You probably have a lot of old buddy colleagues from Tampa on your show, I bet, don't you? You know what? The li the list is growing and growing, my my brother. <laughs> I bet it is. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, let's not get ourselves, Chris. That was a fun time back then. I've always said to you before that, to me, and I it, I lived it, you lived it, er, Joey Johnson lived it, Nick Puglisi, not going to forget anybody. You guys are my right. dream team of colleagues, for crying out loud. We used to go out and have a blast. And we got a young guy here sitting in here named Louis Eddie Owais, who's just a young pup like we were back then. Yeah, you're uh, right. I do have a lot of them on. Yes, uh, it was. Uh, we had quite the team. It was a time when newspapers were burgeoning. It's too bad what's happened to them these days. But it's good to know that uh, we found outlets in which we can continue to do what we like to do so much, right? You bet. And on Facebook, I made sure. I don't know if you saw the post or not. But uh, I actually put that photo of you and I up when we were over at Joey Johnson's fundraiser. Oh, okay. okay. So when you I look at it, 
Well, I put it up there recently, but look for it to know that we came from that fundraiser with Joey Johnson, the guy that hired me so that I could go out there and make some lifelong friends. So I'll probably, jo, Joey hasn't been on yet, but I'll get on Johnson next. But we've had, but you're right, the list is going up and up. So say hello to uh, Lewis, uh, Chris. Hello, Lewis, how are you? Hey, Chris, nice to meet you. How's it going, man? Uh, I guess I'm we're going to be talking some Florida sports today. Shall we? Let's go. Let's dive in. Let's, let's do it. Okay, well, let's talk about that. Uh, you obviously been working with the Florida Gators for a while. I know some of the coaches that you've dealt with were Urban Meyer, Steve Spurrier, who I, you said has an office nearby, Billy Donovan, Dan <laughs> Mullen. My goodness, not bad work, not, not bad stuff, Mr. Harry. No, just to provide some context, uh, um, uh, I was at the Tampa Tribune in 1990 when the um, and covering high school sports, which right around the time probably you were doing the same thing when the uh, Tribune sent me up to cover the to be, to be their beat writer um, and stationed me in Gainesville. And I was there for 10 years. I actually left to go to the Orlando Sentinel in 96. And then in 2000, uh, the Sentinel moved me down to Tampa to cover the NFL and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I missed the Urban Meyer uh, period because I was down there in Tampa. But it was in 2011 when the Sentinel started sh- started shrinking and what have you. I did, a, I did take a job here. So I came up here in 2008, or excuse me, 2011, and for the last uh, eight years, been writing about Florida sports. There's me and another former Tampa Tribune colleague of mine by the name of Scott Carter, okay. and uh, we we write for FloridaGators.com. He's kind of like the football guy. I'm kind of like the basketball guy, but I'm at I've been at all the games so far this season, and I, I, I will miss the one this weekend because I'll be a, at a basketball game in Connecticut, but. Uh, you know, when you cover Florida sports, you're covering uh, uh, obviously a lot of a lot of successful athletes, obviously a lot of successful coaches, and a, an overall athletic program, which is one of the best in the country. I think they they they're, they're boasting uh, this week or last week that Florida's uh, I think was ranked the number seven academic public school in the country, and also had a top ten football team and a top ten basketball team. So those are the, the at that time, so those are pretty good numbers. So have you, have you ever worked with Urban Meyer? I'm sure you've obviously been in communication with the guy, even if you never yeah, worked actually, with him. Actually, uh, when time. I was doing an NFL, when I was doing the NFL, I came up and sat in his office for not quite an hour. I would think doing a story on the the future of maybe the spread offense in the NFL. I also did a uh, story on him about a old uh, 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 former Gator by the name of Brad Culpepper who had opened up a. a, a became a, a lawyer in Tampa and stuff, but in terms, of, I've never covered Urban Meyer per se, but obviously uh, knew a lot about him, and um, a lot of people were, were kind of looking at Dan Mullen as kind of like the, uh, the you know, Aaron, you know uh, Urban Meyer 2.0, because they, they obviously have a lot of the same traits. Uh, uh, Dan Mullen is part of that uh, Urban Meyer coaching tree, and um, he's certainly doing a, a pretty damn good job with this program right now considering what he inherited a couple years ago. So what's it like to work with Steve Spurrier? I know that, uh, you, didn't you say he had an office right nearby? I'll bet he's full of stories. No, well, he, yeah, well, he's, he, he came back after he left uh, uh, South Carolina, after he retired from South Carolina. Right. Um, he took a job here. He was hired here as a quote-unquote uh, athletics ambassador. And they, they put his office right down the hall. So, um, you know, I duck in there every now and then. He weighs me in there to show me tape of the of the games because the, the coaching staff provides him, uh, you know, the, 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 the game tape, uh, you know, ask his advice on some things. And, you know, he's around to do a lot of, uh, to make some appearances and stuff like that. And he's, he's very busy on radio shows and, and, and stuff. But, uh, I do find when I'm in there and he's in there, I usually find time to stop in there and, uh, and chat him up a little bit. He's, uh, you know, for, for 10 years, I covered him. We had some, he 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 is one. Of, he is the most interesting person I ever had to deal with on a day to day basis. So it, 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 I say interesting because um, you know the the quotes that would come out of his mouth. You would think some coach you couldn't put a gun to their head and he would say some of these things. But uh, at the same time, uh, you wrote something he didn't like, and that happened. Uh, you would hear about it, and uh, it, it, it it could be contentious. Um, but we moved on from that, and uh, you know I could. You know, I I, can, I, I, I I look up to him. He is the ambassador. He's the most famous person to ever come out of the University of Florida. I mean, he's got the largest building in the state of Florida has his name on it. So uh, uh, he's quite the icon, and it's cool to have him right down the hall and to, and to duck in there every now and then. Yeah, my dealings with him were back in the day when they had the Tampa Bay Bandits 
Right. I covered uh, the Bandits. Uh, they didn't have a team in South Florida, but I used to go up to Tampa to cover the Bandits. And then I actually caught up with them again when Wisconsin took on South Carolina. And you know what? We shared a couple of nice stories back in the day in Tampa uh, with Bandit Ball, and now here the guy is coaching the Gamecocks. So, you know, he's a candid individual, that's for sure. And, uh, no doubt. And, you know, Florida football definitely, in my opinion, had some great success under his guidance. And he's one of the better football minds in the country. I guess if there's only one thing he probably did fail at, it was trying. Then again, everybody does. It's with the Washington Redskins, and he had to try. He uh, go with a two quarterback system, and he didn't mind giving some of his old Gators a chance to play and play for pay. That's for sure. Well, when I, I mean, being somebody who grew up in Washington, I know the I know Washington sports backward and forward. I mean, what? I mean, when he took that job, I, I mean. It, you know, Dan Snyder was in his third season, I think, owning the team. I think time has bore out that uh, I think Steve Spurrier probably would have been more successful had he taken a different job because if you, you go there, you're not going to succeed. I mean, the, the fish stinks from the head down. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you look at just what's happened there, you go there, it's it, it's your it's suicide for, for a coach. I mean, even Joe Gibbs had, had I think, four seasons when he made his comeback to try to rescue. I think two of his uh, seasons were losing seasons. Mike Shanahan became a losing coach there. I think that's just a losing proposition going up there, and I think he made it. He, he said before, I've sat in his office before, I had somebody in there, I took someone in there the other day to, to sign something, and uh, uh, he would say, yep, 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 yep. With, Grab the money. Went to grab the money, and uh, he certainly did that. He said they certainly paid him well. I think at that time he was a five. Million, he signed a five-year, twenty-five million dollar uh, uh, contract. I think he was there two seasons. Went twelve and twenty-two. Um, but uh, I, you know, people people can say that about. I I, I don't. I, I think if you, if you uh, had a resurrection of, of Vince Lombardi and brought him back to the Redskins, like he was there in '69 for one year before he died. If you brought him back, you'd have a losing record probably working with Dan Snyder. So I think if Steve Spurrier had gone somewhere, maybe the Carolina Panthers or somewhere, he, you know, he, he wanted it. They told him Bobby Beathard was coming back to be his general manager. Instead, Dan Snyder stuck with his buddy, Benny Serrato, who he played racquetball with as, as the general manager team. So uh, uh, he wanted Tim Ruskell there, who was with him at the Bandits, who became the uh, – who was assistant GM for the Bucks when they won the Super Bowl? He was in Seattle as the general manager when they went to the Super Bowl. He was in Chicago uh, with the Bears uh, when they went to the Super Bowl and lost. Uh, uh, so they, he wanted he needed a football guy around him. He needed somebody to tell him.